Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, got a bunch of stuff laying out in front of me here, sort of like teleprompters, so that I can remember what to say. First of all, I was just thinking this morning, it is way back at the end of January, we mailed those little pieces of photo etch for, you know, for the, uh, the pulpit, <laughs> for the, for the uh, upgrade kit, and we mailed them to somebody in Australia. Well, this was, uh, the, the receipt is dated January the 31st, so I guess that's the end of January, and uh, I'm noticing some spots on the front of my lens there. Better check that out. Okay, this, this must have happened last night. Uh, yeah, uh, it's probably, it's probably this stuff splattering. Or, who knows what it is. Uh, this is on my uh, UV filter, or rather clear glass, or whatever it is, just to protect my lens. I'm glad I had this on. So, uh, let's see if I can get that off. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll deal with this in a moment here. I guess it's probably safe to just lay it down like this. All right, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, January the 31st. That was, uh, what, five weeks ago? So, uh, I, I think his name was Dennis. Dennis, did you get them? <laughs> you should have them by now. <laughs> I know Australia is down on the other side of the world to me, but still. Uh, yeah, so if, if you got them, let us know. Kind of interested to know. Now, remember in the last episode I was having trouble with my vacuum chamber not drawing all the way down to, uh, 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 minus one, uh, <laughs> oh, what's the word I want? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, it turns out there was a bit of a leak. I'd been using the screwdriver to tighten the, to tighten the, uh, clamp. I should have used this thing, a little socket, give me a little bit more torque. <clears throat> solve, solve the problem. Okay, now, uh, the next thing we did was, we're, we're going to have a bit of a rollback here. And, uh, okay, so what I did was I cut up some more sprue, and I mixed up some black acrylic, and I... I put it in this one right here, and we're just doing, I'm just doing sort of a test before we do the real thing with with these pieces here. Like I didn't I didn't waste anything. I cut up new stuff. It took me about an hour. <laughs> uh, however, uh, yeah, in in the rollback when it gets started, what I did was I just did a, a quick handheld shot down into the pressure pot, and this and you're going to see this bubbling. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless I explain what it is. So that's the way the rollback is going to start. With this stuff bubbling. And, and what's happening is the air is coming, is expanding in it. The little tiny air, you have a little, like a grain of sand size bubble of air, and it'll just expand tremendously and it comes to the surface and, and, and comes out. That's the whole idea of the, of the vacuum chamber, which I often call the pressure pot. Okay. Uh, let's let's roll back and uh, get that over with and uh, uh, yeah it's kind of interesting but uh, kind of not too so let's just roll back Okay, what's happening here right now is I'm letting the air back into the vacuum chamber so I can get the lid off. <laughs> yeah, I'd never get the lid off otherwise, right? Anyway, I let it run too long here. I won't do that when, when we do the real pen. This is just sort of the trial run, you might say. Now I'm hoping I didn't wait too long here. Uh, normally what I do is I wait until I notice it's starting to solidify and... I went downstairs to the workshop to get some oil because I want to change the oil in my pump and I guess it 
it probably started to quickly solidify and I didn't notice. So let's see what we got here. It, it, it looks okay. I think it's going to be all right. Yeah, it's, it's settling down there. There's a few little granules that are on the top, but very few. Uh, it's pretty hard for me to, to show it to you here. I don't, I don't want to tip it. It's starting to solidify and I don't want to get any, any air bubbles down in, into it. It's, it's actually fairly solid with little, little particles there. Uh, I believe that the very bottom it might be clear of particles because they do I believe they did float to the top but uh, I'll know once I cut it with a bandsaw into you know a piece about well as wide as it is right now and then maybe oh a little better than three quarters of an inch the other way at least that's what I'm thinking right now I'll just keep cutting the bottom off until I notice I'm getting up to the to the granules and then I'll then I'll quit. It's sort of a trial and error thing when you're doing something like this. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead now and uh, and change my oil. <laughs> I, I I have a tendency to change it way too often, but I got a whole case of this stuff. <laughs> so uh, um, I, I may as well, right? And at least I know that uh, because I used to write down uh, every time I changed the oil. And, and uh, then I would keep track of the, the uh, hours that it would run. Like it's been running here for, for about an hour or more. And, uh, and I, used to, I can't remember how, how long I used to go, 10 hours or something like that, and then I changed the oil. Uh, but I think I changed it more often than that, because I had, I had extra oil, so why not? Uh, anyway, that's what's going to happen. So we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning, and I think if I'm smart here this morning, I will be removing this oil off of our filter here. And I'm hoping that if there are any coatings that they special coatings that they put on this filter, they put it on the inside of the filter, not on the outside. Uh, there's probably about uh, two, four, six, eight nine looks like nine little droplets of oil there and uh, I don't think we need the macro lens let's just see what's going to happen here take this furthest one away from me because if the coating is on the outside if you know what I mean I think we're going to be able to get them off let's turn this around here get a fresh yeah, if the coating is on the outside, the oil could possibly dissolve the coating. Yeah, this seems to be coming out pretty good. It's actually coming out better than I thought it would. At first I thought it was acrylic that it possibly hardened on then. I was thinking, oh my goodness, and it'd be busy with the acetone. And, and being as this is glass, I wasn't too worried about it, but... All right, you know what? This actually came off pretty good. I'm going to just take my microfiber uh, lens cloth here and uh, finish wiping this up here. I should be able to see if I've got any kind of a sheen left. Maybe I should be using uh, some isopropyl first just to dissolve it down. I don't think isopropyl will, will harm any coating that might be on the outside of this, but on the other hand, I, I don't have any uh, proper lens cleaning solution, uh, which is just basically kind of dish soap. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get this done, and then uh, we'll uh, take a look at this and uh, break it open. Yeah. Okay, we are as good as new, maybe even better than new, when it comes to getting our lens cover protector whatever cleaned off. I can't uh, talk and work at the same time. Alright, save these. I like these ones because they uh, they stand up. They don't uh, they don't get hard over time. And you, you know what I got these off of? Uh, when I buy celery at Superstore, they clump, clump it all together and, 
and they use the, these rubber bands to hold the, the stocks together. Uh, yeah, they, they stand up really, really well. I wish I could buy rubber bands like that. Okay, now, doesn't take much to sidetrack me, does it? Now, I made the mistake of forgetting to use mold release, so this may not come out too well. Let's just, uh, first of all, we'll get this funnel affair broken off. I hope it's going to uh, break off properly without taking a whole bunch of the rubber with it. Uh, this is not going well, is it? There we go. Get it out of here. <clears throat> the the reason, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason for this thing here is so that. Uh, now I'm going to use the word pressure pot correctly this time. I, I'll take this thing and I'll put it in my pressure pot, which is a high, which is just a hydraulic cylinder. Some of you may have remembered seeing it from the my pen turning videos. And then I can e e use this as like a tray. That's all this is. Okay, let's get this. Oh yeah, it's coming off. Sort of. Well, as long as it wants to hang on to the, hang on to this thing, let's uh, just let it hang on to it, I guess. Yeah, that, that looks the same as it was before. Now, as well as mold release, I think you can use something like, you know, uh, vegetable oil spray that you, you know, like Pam. I don't know what you call it where you, where you live, but uh, I think you can use that too. Just put it on your finger and smear it around the inside. Um, it, it just helps. Okay, so let's get this off of there. There we go. All right. Now, all right, you can see the, uh, the little pieces there. They're they're going to really show up good once this is turned. You know, I might be able to get two blanks out of this. They, these are these are going down to the bottom pretty good. I was I was thinking that they would be up near the top, but they they've uh, they they seem to be pretty evenly. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet you I can cut this right down the middle like this, and then I can get uh, I can get two blanks out of it. Two skinny blanks, not 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 fat ones like. Uh, like I did this one here, but uh, yeah, yeah, sure. If I go right down the middle here, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it down to the workshop and run it through the bandsaw, but that's not going to be today. I want to work on the model ship a bit yet. I mean, this this uh, episode is called the model ship number such and such. So I guess we better, uh, in keeping with what we're doing here do something with the model ship. Oh, we've got a, uh, an interesting comment from one of the viewers uh, about uh, the, the correct procedure for gluing down a particular part. We'll talk about that. Uh, I, I did sort of look into it a little bit last night and uh, it makes sense. So uh, I'll just pass that on to you. Okay. Undoubtedly, there's somebody watching right now that is uh, thinking to themselves, I wish Ron had shown all the steps how he actually got to this place, <laughs> other than just showing the bubbles. <laughs> well, when we do the big one, you know, that we're, we've been talking about for, what, three years? <laughs> when we actually do the big one, I will try to arrange everything so I can show step by step how it goes. Uh, no promises. Um... I, I just more or less did this as a as a trial run because it's like five years ago since I did the last one, and uh, I just wanted to see make sure I still remembered how to do it, <laughs> and I do. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So when we do the the uh, the uh, well, this one might turn out to be just as good as this one. Who knows? Uh, I might even, I might do a different color. I, I might you do dark green. It has to be something dark that will contrast with the uh, light gray of the sprue, the number XF19 colored sprue. <laughs> okay, just wanted to mention that. 
So, uh, yeah, those of you who are kind of maybe disappointed that you didn't get to see the different steps, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try and do better next time, but that won't be today. Now, let's, let me get cleaned up here and we'll get on to the model ship. Okay, so what our friend is trying to say here is that we are at step 22 here and we're going to be putting parts down. Now, mind you, I'm not going to be doing that today anyway. The reason being is I want to, you know, paint the, the deck area of these parts while they are, while they are off. Like, uh, it's going to be clearly a lot easier to paint something like this if you can have it right down here nice and close rather than if it's stuck on the deck over here somewhere something like that um, so that that has to be all done uh, however when we would be getting to let's just put this carefully here this piece right here is what he's talking about and it it, it appears that we should be putting it down like you can see the pegs on the bottom there, they go in these these holes here. And okay. Now he was saying that when when we flip the page and we have to put our D three down, which is this piece right here, which also isn't isn't ready yet either. Uh you know, I should have sprayed this yesterday when I did that spraying, but that's no big deal. That it is a little bit harder to get these these little pins to line up with with these holes here um, so in other words he's saying it's easier to do this right now like it seems to me we kind of did something like that before didn't we only we we didn't glue it in place but you can see it is it's a, it's a lot it's a lot easier to to get this lined up when you can see what you're doing and then after this is all glued together as one module then put it down on the deck. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. There, see how easy that was? Okay, so, thanks. Now, just for the fun of it here, I want to see how these pieces actually go together. Oh, I gotta be careful here. I gotta remember I got fragile stuff sticking out all over the place. Okay, now this, yeah, this is supposed to go in here. Doesn't seem to want to fit very good. Wonder why. Do I have to maybe enlarge those holes just a tiny bit here? Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to fit. Okay, let's try this one. Should go just like this. Do I maybe have these the wrong way around? No, nope. that, that goes in. This one, this one fits a little better. Yeah. Well, maybe I just wasn't pressing hard enough. Anyway, <clears throat> then these pieces here. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, number 38, and it would go let's just get the other one here. Would it be like this? Yeah, that's the way they go. Yeah, I can see how these would fit together. But why is this one not going into the deck there? It just does not want to go down. Well, I don't know if this is going to be big enough. No, it's not big enough. I was hoping I could enlarge it. Well, I'll think of something, don't worry. We'll just put a little bit of a bevel on the beginning of the hole. And by the way, this uh, this thing here, 
This is made out of acrylic and uh, I actually turned that down and uh, mounted this this thing in it. I thought it'd be kind of handy and it sort of is and it looks nice. Okay. Give it a try now. Uh, it's still a pretty tight fit there. Maybe I should take a drill bit and just enlarge the hole all the way down. Okay, I had some drill bits here earlier. Okay. Okay, that one's too small. So I think we did this one here. Just probably maybe I can just do it with my fingers, or maybe not. <laughs> well, if I use both hands, it does. Okay, now let's try it. It's got to fit now. There we go. Okay, so this one goes here. And this one will go here. Alright, now I know how much I have to paint. We got that right. Yeah. There we go. All right, so I, I don't need to worry about painting right underneath this part, and although may as well. Uh, okay, I think that's what I should be doing next is is getting these uh, platforms painted. I wonder what's is this going to be shown? I think so. I think parts of this are going to be seen here, uh, so this this should also be painted. Now, just moments ago, I realized that I had put this piece on the wrong way. Yeah, this piece has the door go to the back, but the uh, this was supposed to be like this. And what drew that to my attention was, let's see if this will go nice and easy like it did before. Well, anyway, it, it what drew that to my attention was I was thinking, well, the piece that goes on here isn't going to be able to fit because this part was hanging out over top of it, and then I realized, hey, wait a minute, you got that the wrong way around. There. Okay. That's better. Now. This uh, part of the bulkhead here, uh, if, it, if it's not painted the 19, the same as this is, what we do see of it is going to look like bare plastic. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and paint this before I do anything with the deck here. And the deck will be the, the 77, the same as here and here. Okay, I've had to twist our part around here a little bit so that the angle is better for me because I, I couldn't see this little edge right here. Now I sort of can. Now it doesn't matter if I get it on the deck area, and it doesn't matter if I get it up here, because it's going to be covered. All we got to do is just worry about taking the uh, plastic look off of this. I don't know if I have to give it two coats or not here. I don't think so. I think one coat's going to be just fine. And once again, once this all shrink wraps, I think it's going to look pretty good here.
All right. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same on uh, this side right here. Oh, about 15 minutes ago, I guess it was, I was down in my workshop and I cut up this scrap wood. And I guess you know what this is gonna be for. Yeah, I'm stealing uh, Military Modeler Paul's idea here. Now this is the smaller pipette. And it, it goes in the smaller hole. It fits, it fits really nice. But the larger pipette, I, which I'm gonna have to cut longer, by the way, uh, but this one I cut earlier before I drilled these holes. Um, it's a little bit on the sloppy side, you might say. I, I would like the hole, the hole to have been a sort of a snug fit, and it's a, it's a pretty loose fit. Anyway, thanks for the idea there, Paul. However, I'm going to be calling it quits here for this afternoon, folks. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.